What's up guys, today we're gonna to give you some tips on setting up your controls on your dirt bike. All right, so when it comes to controls, we got the handlebars, we got your front brake, your clutch, and we got the rear brake and the shifter. So we got five controls total, but let's start with the handlebars first. And the reason why we wanna start with the handlebars is because if you set your levers before you set your handlebars, you'll set your bars and then have to reset your levers. So always start with the handlebars. So if we were to set your bars, take off the crossbar pad, but what I like to do, I like to set my bars evenly in line with the forks. That way, when I'm sitting on the bike in a good rider, uh, riding position, my arms are gonna move exactly with the forks. Some guys, a lot of taller guys, you might see roll the bars forward, and some of the shorter guys, you might see them um, rolling the bars back. And from my personal testing of trying bars at different heights, uh, and in different positions, I've learned that the bike turns the best if the bars are, are evenly in line with the forks, if not a hair back. Rolling them forward, I don't recommend that even if you're a tall rider. If you're a tall rider and you want to get some height between your legs, I recommend running a taller bar rather than rolling the bars forward, which puts your hands in front of the forks, which in my opinion makes the bike harder to turn. So leaving your hands equally in line with the forks, in my opinion, is the best position. An easy way to check this is to simply get off the side of your bike and to look at the angle of the fork and the bar and you can see if that's in line. So you can see here on my top of my bar, uh, handlebar mount, I have a black Sharpie mark. So I make a black Sharpie mark and then I also put a silver one on my handlebar and that just gives me a starting point. A lot of the bars come with their own lines on them and there's a notch right here that you can see but it's much easier for me to just make my own uh, to kind of track where I want to be so that's a do that before you move your bars and then that'll give you a starting point so where you know where you're at so that way when you decide to change your bar position so you can see now I'm at a lower bar position and then where I started. And then if I wanted to try a taller one, you could roll above it. And then it just gives you a nice reference point. And then obviously if you want to go back to where you started, it's really easy to put it back to where it was. So like I said, it is personal preference uh, on where riders like to have their bars, but I do recommend running them straight with the forks. I've tried both forward and back. If, and like I said, if anything, Start in the middle, and I recommend if you, if you do want to go back, go back, but I'm not a fan of um, running the bars forward just because I said it puts your hands in an awkward position. It actually puts your, your hands above the forks, which I think makes the bike harder to turn. And now when you go to tighten back your bars, obviously turn your handlebars, and then just snug up one, come back to the back one. That way, go from top to bottom, back to the top, back to the bottom. That way you get an even pinch around the bars all the way around. And then throw back on your bar pad. All right, so once your bars is, are set, I would go and set your levers. And what I like to do, I like to set, your, set my levers in a comfortable position. You gotta remember the controls is how you control the dirt bike. So this is what you feel. This is your point of contact on the dirt bike is gonna be your, your hands, your fingers, and your feet. So these, all these controls should be in a very comfortable, easy to reach position. You don't wanna have these things in an awkward position. So I like to sit, if I was to sit right comfortably on the bike and place my hands on, it should be just a nice, smooth 
it's not my bar, my levers aren't up like this, creating some weird kink in my wrist or not too far down like this, making me have to ride with my elbows overly high. I'm relaxed. I can sit on the bike in a relaxed position and my levers are right here. So it's just, it's really, if you were to put your hands straight off of your handlebars, your levers should be down just about an inch or so. So, and same thing, to, to move the levers, just the eight millimeter, super simple and basic. And then that gives you a, the ability to raise it or to lower it. And like I said, I try to stay away from mo most of the classes I see, I see more people with lower levers than taller levers. And the reason why I don't like the levers down too far is because it, it makes it hard to reach, especially if you're back on the back of the bike getting traction and just picture if your front brake was in the same position and you're back here, but now you, you decide you need to slow down and start braking. Now you have to reach for the front brake because it's in some awkward low position and it makes it uncomfortable and hard to reach. So that's why if you leave your levers kind of in the middle, they're always easy to reach, always easy to get to. You don't have to put your body in an awkward position to use them. Um, another thing, um, I like to talk about is is when you pull your lever like it's how far your lever is in off the bar like when you pull in your lever the bar is going to take the hit and not the lever so you can see here if I was to crash and this lever the bar the bar would hit before the lever would hit it would save you from breaking um, a lever and also um, when you place your handlebars on on the or place your hand your hands on the handlebars you should be able to, your finger should be landing right in that little, little pocket. So I run them in just enough so when I place my, both my front brake and my clutch that my finger lands right. I'm a, I use my, my pointer finger uh, for both my clutch and my front brake. And uh, it lands perfectly in that little pocket. So, so that's why sometimes you might have to move uh, this traction control. You can slide this in to give you more room of moving your clutch perch if you need to move your clutch perch in. And same thing with your kill, with your kill button. If you need to move it closer to your grip, if you need to skate it out a little bit. So, and if you have really tall fingers and long fingers, you can always scoot it in so you can pull your lever out here and it gives you a little bit more room. If you're a shorter guy, I recommend smaller hands always pulling kind of in the closest part of the lever. And then same thing, if you were to go to the front brake, the front brake is basically gonna be the same thing as the clutch. As far as depth, you're gonna keep it in off the bar, and then same thing. You're gonna, your lever should be even. You shouldn't have one lever here and one lever here. You should be able to look at, the, look at your bike from the front of it, and your lever should be straight. I should be able to sit on the bike. Both, of, both sides are completely level, and then my finger, once again, is landing in that little sweet spot. So that is where we'll go with the, with the hand controls. And another thing I want to talk about is the, the play in the clutch. You don't want to run too much play to where the, the, the play to where you actually pull it is, is, is too much. You want to just have barely, just a little bit, and you can adjust it. On, on some bikes it's different, but this is a hydraulic clutch. I'm going to adjust it right here on a Husqvarna, and that's going to allow... Uh, that's gonna allow the, how much movement's in the clutch before it actually starts to engage. And you shouldn't, sometimes if you pull it in and it's hitting your knuckle and the bike's creeping and you have too much play in the clutch, just adjust a little bit out of your clutch. And another thing as far as how much to tighten your hand controls, it's rider preference. I, I actually tighten mine completely tight because I don't want them to move at all, but I do know riders that snug them up snugly so that if they crash, that the actual the this will still be able to move at on a hard hit and then they'll kick it back up and so they'll just tighten this on a snug but if they're actually to take a hit it will slide and not break the break the uh perch uh, and the clutch lever but like i said that's preference i i don't like mine loose at all i like mine tight because i don't like them coming loose Sometimes if you don't tighten them all the way, as you ride, they can come loose. And then you land really hard off, off a jump and your lever goes, falls down and then you're trying to adjust it while you're racing or riding. So I just run my tight, but that is also another option that some people do just to try to save uh, a lever or a perch uh, in case of a crash. All right, so let's talk about the shifter now. And uh, when it comes to 
uh, adjusting the shifter, I like to run it, if you actually had to put a T-handle on it, it would, it, if you set it on the top, it would actually be, look just a hair high. And if you were actually to almost go to where, if you were trying to get under it, be about level. Um, I like to run it there. You should ride on the balls of your feet. So, and uh, that way when you, when you go to shift, you don't, you don't want your shifter, what, what you don't want to see is the shifter below the foot peg. Because what, in order to get your foot under it, is you're going to have to move your foot into a really weird, awkward position to get your toe under it in order to shift. So if you run it at a level, uh, at a pretty much a level height, just to, like I said, it'll, it looks like it's a hair up if you hit, if you set it on the top. But you got to remember, in order to shift, you're going to be putting your foot underneath of it to shift up. So it's pretty much at, a, at almost level. I like to keep it there. You'll see if you go to adjust this, it's, a, it's just an eight millimeter and uh, it, it comes right off and it has these little splines. What you'll notice is, is when you go to move it, you'll see like, see how the level, if you just go to change it one spline, look how much height it changes it. So it actually will raise it really high. So that's too high for me. So that's what I'm saying. Like, even though they have these little mini splines in it, one little small adjustment makes um, a really big <coughs> uh, movement. So I recommend just try to keep it level. Uh, you'll see if you can get it a hair higher, uh, that's good as well. Cause like I said, if you were to take a motocross boot, you gotta remember, in order to rotate a motocross boot, you have to put your foot underneath this thing in order to get it to shift. So if that thing is way down too low, it's just gonna put your, it's gonna make you have to rotate your hips forward and it's gonna shift a lot of weight towards the front of the bike uh, that shouldn't be there. Uh, so keep it in a, in, in a nice balanced uh, level position. And then uh, I'm just gonna throw this thing back on for now, but I do recommend putting Loctite on it um, if you're gonna use it. I have some I'll throw back on later. Staying neutral and level, you know, not being too far up and not being too far down is uh, probably the best. All right, and the last thing we're gonna look at is the rear brake. And same thing, I like to run my rear brake pretty much, pretty much level and same thing. Is, is the reason I want to do that level, if not even a hair, if you actually look at it, it's actually up a hair, a hair off of the foot peg. And the reason why I like it up just a hair is because by the time that you apply the brake and it actually engages, your foot's level with the foot peg. The last thing you want to do is have your foot peg, and I see this all the time when I, when I go through my classes, I see guys with low rear brake pedals, and then by the time that they actually put their brake on, their foot is pointed way down here, and that's another thing. It's causing the hips to have to rotate, putting your foot in an awkward position, putting your hips in an awkward position. So if you have a low rear brake foot pedal, raise it up just, uh, just to be a hair above the foot peg, and uh, I think that's a good, safe place. Like I said, if you're on the balls of your feet, it's actually going to make it easier. If you're riding on the balls of your feet and you go to slide forward and that thing's up a hair, it's easier to reach. So you can see once the brake is engaged, it is completely level with the, foot uh, with the foot peg. So my foot is never having to drop below my foot peg in order to fully engage the rear brake. Sometimes when people say, I'm having difficult stopping, it's because sometimes the rear brake, pad the rear brake is so low, they're having to stomp on it in a, such a weird, awkward position, they can't get to it properly. Um, and if you need to adjust it, most bikes are all the same. They have these two little nuts back here and you can just crack crack them and then you can uh, go counterclockwise or clockwise, tighten or loosey, and it's gonna raise the height, these little 10 millimeters on a Husky. Whether you go, go uh, tighten or loosen, it will raise the height of that. So once again, just I recommend keeping just a slightly above the foot, foot peg. So I hope these tips have been helpful. If you guys liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody else that might like it, be sure to share it. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time here on The Feist Life.